Hi, I'm David from Levica Photography, and today we're back in the bellows of Tempe camera, and they let me loose on their inventory, and I get to test the 5DS, not with a Canon lens either, with a Sigma R lens, so this should be really good. The Pentax 645Z, the Nikon D810, my Olympus OMD EM52, and an A6000 in white? What? Yeah, this is going to be cool. So we're going to do a quick image quality comparison test in RAW. That way you guys can see what to expect from each format, uh, which unfortunately is going to knock the A6000 out of it. But 64 megapixels, 50 megapixels, 50 megapixels, and 36 megapixels. As far as like using it, it is very easy to use. I mean, it's very straightforward. If you're a professional photographer, diving into this camera is so easy. So easy. Yeah, so right now I'm at f2.8 ISO 100. Which is what we're going to be shooting all of these at, just to see what they're like. And I've got a good shot with a good depth of field. So, you know, hopefully uh, we'll get some good results out of this. Okay, now for the 5DS. Let's see how this does. And this is with the Sigma Art 50mm f1.4 lens. Okay, now we're going to do the same test with the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II with the uh, Panasonic Leica 25mm f1.4 Sumalux. That gives us close to the uh, equivalent focal length that we were just shooting with on the other two cameras. So a very normal looking setup. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle this through and let's see how well this lens does. By the way, this is metering consistently with the Pentax 645Z. Okay, next up is the tried and true Nikon D810. And uh, you know, this thing is just a great little camera. Okay, so here's a comparison between our four different cameras. We've got the 5DS over here, the Nikon D810, the Pentax 645Z, and the uh, Olympus EM52. The Nikon and the Canon, Nikon, sorry, are full frame. And if we look in here, if we zoom in, now my goal here was to try to get the Bougainvillea perfectly in focus on these. And it looks like it's perfectly in focus on all of them except for the Pentax. But one thing I did want you to understand is three of these cameras right here, this one, this one, and this one, uh, all metered exactly the same. So, you know, micro four thirds to 35 millimeter full frame to medium format digital. There's no difference in metering the Olympus OMD EM52 is shot at 64 megapixel pixel shift raw and then the Canon is 50 megapixel raw and then the Pentax was 50 megapixel JPEG and then the Nikon D810 is 36 megapixel. So image quality wise right off the bat if we zoom in here now these are all shot with what I consider very good to excellent glass and, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, you don't really see a huge difference right here between the M52 and the Canon. You know, zoomed in, it's not huge. But what you do see is if we look at the back buildings here, the difference in depth of field between the buildings. And... Uh, the Canon 5DS is shooting the Sigma Art lens, and then the, the Nikon D810 is shooting the uh, micro 55mm f2.8. And then the Pentax is shooting a 55mm Pentax f2.8 lens. And uh, the Olympus is shooting the Panasonic Lumix 25mm f1.4 lens, but these are all shot at f2.8. So if we look at the foreground, of these cameras. You, you'll notice that the Olympus of course is is more in focus. And why is that? Uh, because it's 25 millimeter. Now to understand uh, camera formats you have to understand 
the actual lens design. So if you notice in the foreground, these three right here pretty much look about the same if you look at this little cactus that looks like Mickey Mouse over here. And uh, the reason why I'm pointing this out is 55 millimeter on the Pentax versus 55 millimeter on the Nikon D810, uh, one thing that you have to know is the convergence of the lens, where the lens crosses light. From there to the film plane is the distance of 55 millimeters. It has nothing to do with the viewing angle. And we'll get into this later on in lens design. I'm going to do another video about that. But all it means is that this is 55 millimeters away, this one's 55 millimeters away, this one's 50 millimeters away, and this one's 25 millimeters away. So what changes is the angle of view. And by that, uh, what I mean is if we look at these, the Pentax, right here you see the bench and the trash can over here in the corner then you see the wall of this building. Now this is the equivalent of 43 millimeter on full frame as far as you know how much information, how wide you're getting. So over here this is equivalent of 55 millimeter on full frame. It's obviously the bench is right at the edge and you don't even see the wall so it's just a little tighter. Uh, but what we, what we do have is the bigger sensor. So even though this is the same focal format lens because the sensor is bigger we're capturing more information around the edges. Okay so now if we go in and look at the depth of field now obviously here I thought I had the Bougainvillea completely in focus and I really didn't. But realistically I think it's safe enough to say that between the micro and the Pentax they're pretty much the same depth of field, just that Pentax is showing you more information. Okay, so the other thing that you might not know is the Pentax is actually a four-thirds design, meaning the ratio is four to three, whereas the uh, full-frame 35 millimeter cameras are two to three. The Olympus is also four-thirds, but it's micro four-thirds. What that means is basically four of these sensors will fit into this sensor. Two of these sensors will fit into these two sensors. So, you know, it's something to think about. But image quality wise, um, you know, the, I think that the Olympus actually held up very well except for areas where there's movement. And what you see here is this cross-hatching effect uh, where everything was blowing around. And uh, you know, obviously you don't see that in the other three because they're capturing the image in a one-off. But the Olympus doesn't really shine out in the field where it shines really is in the studio. Anyway, uh, let me show you another comparison here. Now these are all at f2.8. Obviously we've got more of a depth of field on the Olympus with the building in the back being more in focus and everything in the foreground being more in focus. Our puppet cactus. And that's because our 25 millimeter lens is equaling a viewing angle of what a 35 millimeter 50 uh, millimeter lens would equal. Now one thing that you have to understand is not all 50 millimeters and 55 millimeter lenses are the same. And I'll do a comparison of 50s later on just because there's so many 50 millimeter lenses out there. They all have varying viewing angles. This is the image circle of the Nikon uh, 55 millimeter micro uh, f2.8 lens on uh, the Nikon D810. So let's zoom in here. That's the actual image circle on the film plane. Is our big glowing uh, circle here. So anyway, from here Let's look at APS-C size. Now this is APS-C size right here. You can't even really hardly tell it's there. But this is shot from roughly the same spot with the same 55 millimeter lens on it. So if I take 
the D810 away, that's the information that we're getting with the uh, A6000 mounted with the 55 millimeter lens at f2.8. So what we're showing here is this has the same depth of field as the Nikon D810. So there's no change in depth of field here because they're shot at the same spot. All it's doing is cropping the image down to here. Now we could take this a step further and then we'll bring in the uh, Olympus OMD EM2 with the 55 millimeter micro lens mounted to that at f2.8. And let's go ahead and zoom in here really quick. And what you see here is it has the exact same depth of field. Nothing has changed. It's showing you the very same depth of field. It's just cropping the image down more again. So if we back out here, that's how much it's cropping it down. That's the difference between full frame and micro four thirds. Okay, so what about the difference between micro four thirds and APS-C size? That's the difference right there. It's not huge. Now, the difference between all those and full frame, that gets a little bit bigger. So what you get with full frame is, is more area. And so to match that viewing angle, yes, uh, you do actually change the depth of field when you match viewing angles. So if we were to try to create a viewing angle of 53 degrees, which is what the 55 millimeter micro is on the Nikon D810, uh, what this means is that this is a 53 degree view and if I were to shoot this on the A6000 I would need to shoot at 32 millimeter to create a 55 millimeter same degree of view. The sensor is going to be closer to the convergence on the lens which basically means that your depth of field increases because you're shooting wider. The big question is, does Micro Four Thirds have a deeper depth of field? And the answer is yes and no. It just depends on how you look at it. Are you cropping the image down shooting from the same spot? Or are you trying to match the focal length of the lens with one with a similar viewing angle? So one with a similar viewing angle on Micro Four Thirds obviously is going to be the 25 millimeter uh, lens and that is going to double your depth of field and if you compare that against medium format it actually almost triples your depth of field. Okay at f8 now what we're seeing image quality wise is the, uh, the a6000 is over here so obviously it's looking a little smaller and then the Canon 5DS is right here and then the Pentax 645Z is down here and the uh, Olympus OMD EM5 II with the 25mm lens is here. So now if we zoom all the way out and let's look at these. Again these are 4 thirds format and then these are uh, 2 to 3 format. Okay so at f8 it's harder for bigger sensors to get everything into focus. You just can't. And if you look at the trees overhead, uh, at the very top of the frame, how much they're out of focus. Except for the Olympus, that this obviously you're starting to see some definition in the leaves. It looks more in focus. Uh, APS-C size also looks more in focus, whereas these two formats still look very much out of focus. You're increasing the depth of field, but with a bigger sensor, it's harder to get everything into focus. With a smaller sensor, it's easier. Uh, so for landscape work, I actually prefer to shoot the A6000 out of all these, uh, simply because I can shoot um, better glass closer to the sweet spot. And we'll get into lens design later. But usually the sweet spot of wide angle lenses is somewhere around f5.6, which is perfect for APS-C size. It doesn't really work so well on full frame. Full frame you have to be somewhere around f11, and uh, that usually approaches the soft side of some wide angle lenses. And uh, on medium format, you have to be at f16 to f22 to get everything into focus.
the convergence of the lens on micro four thirds down here uh, gets softer after f4 and I completely disagree with this theory okay at f16 I'm comparing the Olympus OMD EM uh, 5 Mark II at 64 megapixels against the A6000 uh, with the same lens, the 55 millimeter micro. And, you know, this is shot at f16 in high res mode. And uh, I believe that this is completely, you know, blowing that theory out of the water. It just depends on what the lenses are actually designed for. Now lenses that are designed for four-thirds they might fall apart after f5.6. Um, some do, you know, but realistically uh, with this lens, this lens is tight on full frame all the way to f22 and because the convergence of the lens to the film plane does not change between formats, it's going to be sharp at f22 on all formats just crop down. So that whole theory of not being able to increase the depth of field past um, f5.6 on micro four thirds and f8 on APS-C size is completely bunk. Um, it just depends on if you're using a lens designed for that camera that doesn't really shoot very well after that point then yeah probably but if you're using, you know, adapting a manual lens to it, you're going to see the same results that you would on the lens that it was designed for. Uh, we got the 645Z in the studio, away from Tempe camera, which is kind of nice. So now we're going to try this depth of field test and really see what the difference is. So we'll compare this against the Olympus and we'll see what it's like. Now, over here we've got a 55mm f2.8. And uh, if you want to look at the back of what our view looks like here, let me turn this on. So this is what our view looks like. That's our depth of field. Now we're going to try this with the Olympus and really the closest lens that I have to it is a 20 millimeter f1.7. So it'll be slightly wider, but just a little bit. But it'll be close enough to really kind of get a feel for what we're doing. So right now this is at f2.8 and we'll go ahead and take this photo. And then we're going to crank this f-stop up and we'll go to f5.6 just to see what that's like. Okay. So the Pentax has a 55 millimeter lens that's equivalent to 45 millimeter and 35. And this has a 20 millimeter lens that's equivalent to 40 millimeter. So it's just slightly wider. This is the 20 millimeter f1.7. This is the 55 millimeter f1.2. This is the 45 millimeter f1.8. And then this is the Pentax 55 millimeter f2. So what we're trying to do here is achieve the same depth of field as the Pentax. Can it be done with micro four thirds? A lot of naysayers say no. Well, if you're looking at these, then obviously you're thinking, eh, maybe. So the 45 millimeter f1.8 it's not quite as deep as the 55 millimeter uh, as far as the convergence goes but you can see over here on this one the shallow depth of field right here um, it's pretty obvious that it's very close to this um, there's shot at slightly different angles but ever so slightly now right here you can see the 20 millimeter f1.7 does have a greater depth of field than the 55 millimeter on the Pentax at f2.8. These are very close to the same depth of field in the background. There's still more blur on the Pentax side, um, but very close. And this one's at f1.8, this is f2.8, but this is the difference between 45 and 55. And what I tried to do here is just back off a little bit so my uh, subject was roughly the same size and I should have gotten a little closer in on the 45 to my subject uh, just to get the head size the same because they're not quite the same but they're close anyway yes you can achieve a very shallow depth of field this way you have to excuse my 
crappy blurry image on the Olympus uh, because apparently the camera shook a little bit but anyway uh, what we're looking at is not necessarily our subject but the background behind the subject so right here we're looking at the um, 20 millimeter f1.7 all the way open compared to the 55 millimeter on the Pentax at f5.6 and these have about the same exact depth of field I want to say they're pretty much dead on so that's two and a half times more the depth of field but that actually makes sense because we're two and a half times more the distance from the convergence of the lens to the sensor even though we have the same view angle so yes this is true uh, but if we were to again try to shoot this with the 45 at f1.7 we could achieve a very shallow depth of field that matches this and if you want to do the same viewing angle to get f2.8 then you need an f.95 lens on micro four thirds Welcome to my gigantic camera. Yeah, that's right, I have a van that's converted into a large format camera, and this is the size of the film plane. And this is my friend Bob here. And this is what it actually looks like inside a camera. And what I wanted to explain is that, you know, you guys are always talking about DxO marks and how one camera does this better than another camera. Well, in reality, here's your full frame 35 millimeter DSLR, and here's your micro four thirds camera. And, uh, either one of these barely captures an eyeball in here we're looking at an image that's f6.3 at this size and the tip of his nose is out of focus and his eyes are in focus you know he's just barely there you know everything else behind him is super blurry so this is the ultimate depth of field if you really want to get serious about depth of field I don't worry about the DxO marks because in the end it's who's using the camera and uh, how you compose the image that counts. So anyway, I hope you guys like this review. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, otherwise you guys have a good day and we'll talk to you later. See ya.